Hi all, Lee Veris here with Phototech Tuesday. Each week I'll be posting a new video about photography, technology, art, and everything in between. Today, looking forward to cooler weather, I'm going to examine one of my favorite photography scenarios in Venice, Italy during Carnival. Carnival in Venice is a photographer's fever dream. Incredible, surreal imagery around every corner. Bobby and I lead a tour there every year, the week before the Catholic holiday of Lent. That's basically when Carnival happens. If you're interested in joining us, you should sign up soon as it always fills up early. I'll put the sign up link in the description. Okay, let's take a look at the magic of Venice for Carnival. Every morning before sunrise during Carnival, Costumers gather to pose for photographers on the Grand Canal at St. Mark's Square. This is one of the great opportunities to use flash lighting creatively, balancing the fill flash to the background light to create kind of magical images that convey the dreamscape that is Venice Carnival. The main idea here when capturing images is to expose for the background and then balance your flash to fill in and bring the exposure up for your subject. So if you shoot at your normal flash sync speed, usually around a 200th of a second, the background likely will end up being underexposed or black. If you slow down your shutter speed to around 1 15th of a second or 1 8th of a second, you have an opportunity to add some camera movement to get that sort of magical blur. Shaking, rotating, or zooming during the exposure creates that classic Venice Carnival image that costumers will really appreciate. Every costumer carries a card in their port, in their, with their photo and an email, so you can send them the images you create. Sadly, only about 10% of the photographers capturing images of the costumers actually send pictures to the costumers. Anyway, for today's Phototech Tuesday, I thought I'd show you how to simulate that drag the shutter movement effect in Photoshop. So we can go from this shot without movement to this. This is where we create that magical environment for our costumers. Now, when, I, uh, when I'm photographing, I will always do one shot without movement like this before attempting to do the movement because it's really tricky and, and sometimes you just don't get a good shot. So we're going to kind of learn how to simulate this effect so you can kind of guarantee that you'll get a usable uh, kind of drag the shutter look. And uh, let's take a look at this in Photoshop. All right, so here in Photoshop, um, I've opened up my image and uh, there's no there's no movement in it at all. It's just captured the flash on camera. The balance is nice. I like everything about it, except I want to add that movement. So this suggests that I need to separate the subject from the background. So I'm going to go ahead and jump this background into a new layer. So now I have two layers and uh, we're going to select the subject. So I'll go up here and uh, select Subject. And Photoshop calculates. And <laughs> it's, I'm always surprised at how good a job it does uh, at selecting a subject. Um, let's, however, you know, whenever I do this, I'm going to go into uh, the Select and Mask uh, panel. So you have to have a selection tool highlighted in your tool panel. And then this Select and Mask button shows up. And when we click on that, we go into this you know, mask, uh, masking panel with all these different masking controls. Now, I'm, I'm viewing this on a, a colored background here um, so we can kind of see the nature of the edge. And really, the selection is really excellent. Uh, probably the only thing I'll do is just add a little bit of a radius to look for uh, the edge, and that will kind of smooth out some of the harder edges and um, we can also do a little bit of feather with this. So there's various controls here. Um, I'm not going to go into all of that because it's not really necessary for this one. However, the output here, this output settings, 
I want to output this to a layer mask because I already have a separate layer here. I'm going to do layer mask here and just hit OK. So now I have my second layer is masked out very nicely here. And uh, the next part is treating this background separately. So I'm going to I'm going to load my selection from that layer mask that I already created here. So I'm going to hold down the uh, command or control key and click on the layer mask thumbnail and it reloads that marching ants selection. Okay, so the next step here is I'm going to turn off this layer and now we're looking at the background. So I'm going to have that background highlighted. And what I want to do here is simulate what this would look like without the flash fill because I'm going to blur this whole background and I want the subject to look like it didn't have any flash on it. So I'm going to I'm going to call up a curve here, a curve adjustment, and it already comes in uh, with that layer mask that that we created before. And I'm, it's targeting just that figure now. So I'm going to lower the the white point of that curve until we get it down to look somewhat like the unfilled costume would have looked against this background if I hadn't used the flash. All right, we're going to go ahead and merge that down to the background. So I'm going to go over here, merge down. And now you see when we put our top layer back on, it looks like normal, but we're going to blur this background layer. So I'm going to come up here. Uh, I'll go to filter. Um, we're going to go blur and motion blur. All right. So that's pretty cool. Maybe I'll, maybe a little less, maybe like something like that. I'm going to do this in two stages here because, um, well, you'll, you'll, you'll understand why in a minute, but I've got a decent level of blur here. Uh, let's accept that. And I'm going to add one more layer of blur. So I'm going to jump this now blurred layer into a new layer and we're going to blur it some more. So I'm going to go up here to blur motion blur. And this time I'm going to really kind of crank it here a little bit, maybe change the angle a little bit. Let's really blur it here. Kind of like the way this the water is looking here. Nice, nice and blurred. Okay. Now we've got two levels of blur here and I'm not going to use all of this layers blur. So the, the more blurry layer, I, I kind of like the water it looks better in that layer, but I, I want to see more of the, the post action in, in less blurred. OK, so we're going to add a layer mask to that. So I'll click on the layer mask icon here and I'm going to mask off kind of the top portion of this. So I'm going to get my gradient, where, which is going now from black to transparent. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to start kind of start right about here and mask off this upper part and leave what's essentially the more blurry water in in place. And I'm also um, I'm going to come back in here with a brush. So I'll change my colors to white. I'm going to use a nice big brush to kind of brush in the blurrier halo around the headdress here. Okay, and also around this feathered uh, baton, wand, or staff, or whatever you want to call it here. And now one more thing to kind of really uh, just kind of play around with it a bit. If I, if I offset this layer, I'm going to just drag it a little bit to the, just to the right here, and I've got a little more of that uneven uh, halo around the subject. And um, God, I like that much better. All right, so, so now if we check out where we came and where we ended up, I'm gonna move this over just a little bit here. Uh, I'll go back in history to what it looked like when we brought it in and where we ended up. So it's, this is an interesting technique to simulate that that 
kind of motion blur in the drag the shutter thing to sort of a simulate a, a, a slower shutter speed and, and moving the camera. But it's also a good way of like really um, getting your subject to stand out from the background because all the blur now is on the background. The, stub, the subject is fully sharp. All right. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And hopefully this has provided some inspiration for your own creative explorations. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell so you don't miss another Phototech Tuesday. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.